This video was sponsored by Athletic Greens. Oh, hi. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I made this wooden box. Although, it's a little more complicated than that. This is actually a floating bathroom vanity designed by my wife. And of course, it was up to me to make her dreams come true. And I gotta tell you, for this just being a wooden box, it was one of the more difficult things that I've ever made. It's got some fun features in it that make it useful as a bathroom vanity. But all in all, it was a doozy of a project. So watch the video and see how I did it. Also check the video description down there for links to products and merchandise. We've got some new shirts and hats up on the website. There's a link to our Patreon account down there if you want some more access to the channel and all that good stuff. But for now, watch me sand my life away making a box. Welcome to our edition. This is a little addition we're putting on the side of our house. It's gonna have a bathroom here and I gotta make a floating vanity. And the sink is centered at 26 and a half inches off of that left hand wall there. So I'm gonna bring the bathroom vanity out 53 inches total, which will make that sink dead center in the middle of the vanity. And it's gonna float off the floor. So I gotta figure out all these dimensions and plumbing and all that fun stuff. I decided I was gonna make the entire thing out of some rift sawn white oak. Now if you don't know what rift sawn white oak is, well this is regular oak. See it's got some pretty pronounced grain in it and it's cut a little different than rift sawn. Rift sawn's cut in a way that it's got this really nice straight vertical grain. And in my opinion it's one of the most pretty of all the white oak options out there. Now the first thing we needed to do was glue up a big slab of this rift sawn white oak that will eventually cut down for all of our drawer faces and wrap the entirety of our vanity. So I picked out a few pieces, made sure that I was well over what I needed for my panel, and I started slicing them up into, well, smaller, more manageable size pieces. Making sure to leave them a little bit long so they had plenty of room to cut them down, you know, after the fact. So after cutting all my pieces up to roughly the correct length and laying them out, making sure I liked the way they looked, I decided I didn't really need to face joint these because they were pretty good to start with, but I did need to edge joint them so that I could run them through the table saw and get them to the right width. So after edge jointing them, I ran them through the table saw to get them to the right width, in case you didn't pick up on that. And then I sent them through the planer to bring them right down to three quarters of an inch thick because that's gonna be the same thickness as my drawer faces and everything else, so it's a nice uniform size. Then with all my boards milled up straight lined, they were ready to glue together. So I set them all on top of my workbench, played around with the orientation to make sure I liked the way it looked, and I started smearing glue in between all my seams. And because of the nature of this vanity project, I couldn't use any biscuits or dominoes in this glue up because we're gonna be hogging out a bunch of material to give this vanity a fluted look. And if we put dominoes in there, well, we'd just cut right into them and expose them and the whole thing would be terribly ugly. So we're just gonna struggle in trying to glue this up and get it nice and even without any dominoes, which means hitting it with a hammer to make sure all of our seems line up. After letting my glue dry for an hour or so, I pulled the entire slab out of clamps and I scraped off all the excess glue with a putty knife. This is really satisfying. I don't know why, but it's one of my favorite steps. And then because my seams weren't perfect, I had to hit a few of them just with a block plane real quick to knock them down so that I didn't have to spend hours trying to sand everything smooth. The block plane, also a very satisfying tool when it's used. Ooh, fluffy. And then after the block plane, I sanded the entire slab smooth because somebody had to do it. 
With our slab done, I set that aside and it was time to start working on the carcass for our cabinet. So I designed what I wanted it to look like in SketchUp and then made a cut list from that design. I'm gonna be building the entire carcass out of three quarter inch birch ply. And if there's one thing I love to do, it's run full four by eight sheets of plywood through the table saw all by myself. Lucky for me, I have a pretty big outfeed table, so it's not too bad. And then because I'm lazy, I just cut them to the right length on my chop saw. Just cutting part way through on one side, flipping it around, and cutting the rest of the way through on the other side. Because it's a carcass and you're not gonna see it and it doesn't have to be perfect, so just get it done. Now because this is gonna be a floating vanity, one of our brace pieces on the back is gonna also be our French cleat to hang the vanity off the wall. So I had to cut down one of my brace pieces with a 45 degree angle on it so that we have something to hang the vanity with. Then with all of my cabinet parts cut out, I had two side panels, two middle dividers, a bottom piece, and then a bunch of internal brace pieces. It was time to start hooking this whole thing together. Now we're gonna be building this cabinet quick and dirty, which means we're just gonna glue and screw the entire thing together. But rather than trying to hold the pieces still while I sank screws into it, I like to basically put the entire cabinet together just with glue and brad nails, and then once it's together and the right shape and everything's in the right spot, I'll come back and reinforce everything with screws galore. So with our outside panels glued and nailed in place, I measured out for our internal dividers. These are what's gonna separate the cabinet into three separate banks of drawers with the sink in the middle bank. I drew a line right on the inside edge of where I wanted to land my internal divider. And before I set those internal dividers in place, I need to put in my back brace pieces. This will allow me to butt those internal dividers right up against the back brace pieces and make sure everything's nice and even. So once again, I just spritzed a little glue on there and tacked it in place with a 16 gauge nailer. Zip, zap, zoop. I know I usually say that when I cut something, but I haven't said it for a while and I just really wanted to say zip, zap, zoop. So I said it. After putting a little brace piece on the bottom, I add one on the top, and then it was time to add our French cleat brace piece. This is a two for one, because it acts as a brace piece, but it's also gonna be the French cleat that we hang the whole thing on the wall with. So a little more glue, a few more nails, and a bing, bang, boom. I guess that's a little more appropriate for a nail gun. Then I flipped the whole thing over, and it was time to add those internal dividers. So I just spread a little glue on the opposite side of my pencil line and I slid the dividers in place and tacked them in with the nail gun from the back side. I like to draw a line on the back side to match the line on the front side so I know exactly where to put my nails and I'm not guessing and end up blowing a nail out the side of my divider piece. Ain't nobody want that. Then it was just one more brace piece on the top of the dividers towards the front of the cabinet. And with that, our plywood carcass was completely constructed. Now to sink in a zillion screws to make sure this thing's not going anywhere. It's much easier to add the screws after the fact than trying to wrestle with wet glue. Nails are just useful sometimes. Ain't no shame in that. It really doesn't matter what kind of screws you use. I used Power Pro inch and a half screws cause I like them. And once everything was screwed together, I decided to add a little oak facing on the front of the cabinet. Now you'll see later in the design that you're not really gonna see this part of the cabinet, but on the off chance somebody opened a drawer and got out a flashlight and peeked inside, I want them to know I took the time to face this raw plywood. Now you could glue and tack these face pieces in place, but my favorite way to do it is using these Rockler bandy clamps. These things were an ingenious invention. They got this little rubber band and you just stretch it over the face piece and clamp it onto the plywood and it hooks everything nice and securely until your glue dries. Really, well done Rockler. After that glue was dry, I came back and removed all the bandy clamps as quick as I possibly could pretending like there were murderers that were gonna get me if I didn't do it fast enough and I, oh no, 
The murderers are here. Don't kill me, please. After doing the facing on my top and bottom piece, I added some facing to my middle dividers because I overbuild and overthink everything. While I waited for that to dry, it was time to start adding some detail to our oak slab. So I got one of these quarter inch shank cove bits from Bits and Bits, and I'm gonna use it to add some fluting to the front of this panel that will give the entire vanity a nice fluty look. So I marked out across the entire thing on both sides exactly where I wanted my coves to be carved. Then I got out my Festool track with the matching router that hooks into the track, chalked up that cove bit, and I started coving, baby. Now I wanted to make these coves about 3 8 of an inch deep, and I didn't want to stress out the router bit, so I decided to do three passes on each cove, going down an eighth of an inch with each pass. Yes, this took a ridiculously long time, but, you know, I hate myself, and I like to set myself to tedious tasks whenever possible, apparently. So back and forth and back and forth until a fluted pattern started to appear across the surface of this oak slab. I would go back and forth and back and forth and move my track and back and forth and back and forth and move my track and back and forth. Oh my gosh, I'm getting exhausted just talking about this. Not to mention, you know, at some point I'm gonna have to sand this entire thing. Think, Jason, think. Why did you not just tell your wife, no, I'm not doing it? I know why. Because you love her. And she makes you dinner. And every once in a while she gives you hugs and you like that. So, okay, it makes sense. Do what it takes to make the wife happy. I get it. So, with a little more back and forth and back and forth and moving that track, eventually I worked my way across the entire surface of the slab, making sure that every single flute was evenly spaced, and boom, a freshly fluted panel of rifts on white oak. I do have to admit, it looks pretty darn cool. Now because this fluted pattern is gonna make up the entire front of the vanity, there's not really any good place to put hardware to allow you to pull the drawers open. So I decided to use something I've never used before, and that were these Bloom Undermount Movento drawer slides. They're soft clothes, and they have this little added tip-on device that makes them, wait for it, push to open. I know, crazy. What a world we live in. You just clip this little tip-on device on either slide, and somehow this is apparently magically gonna make the drawers push to open. I don't know, I've never used them before. Now, because I've never used these before, I didn't know how much space to leave behind the drawer face to allow them to push in and release the push to open mechanism. So that's why I designed the carcass in this way. There's gonna be space behind the drawer slides to leave plenty of room for those drawer faces to move in and out. You probably don't need this much space, but like I said, I overthink everything. You just push the slide and they pop out. And then when you shut it, they slow close back in there. They also have this little internal synchronization device. This is basically so that when you push the drawer in, both slides fire at the same time. And there's supposed to be a fiberglass rod that connects the two. But I forgot to order that part. So what do you do when you forget to order something? You find something else that's roughly the same size and shape. In this case, I realized that an arrow from my compound bow was also made of fiberglass, was also circular in shape, and was roughly the same size and shape as the synchronization rods that Bloom sells. And what do you know? It fit perfectly in between the drawer slides, just like it's supposed to, I think. But then again, I've never used these before, so I really have no clue. Anyways, with one drawer slide installed, I started cutting down the parts and pieces for my drawer boxes. Now, I'm not going to show you exactly step by step how I build drawer boxes because I've done numerous videos on that before. If you go look at my cabinet making series, there's an entire video just on constructing drawer boxes. So, 
you click that little tab in the upper right hand corner, you can watch that on your own leisure. Now for the tip on devices, the one modification I have to make to the drawer box is I have to remove the bottom tab on the back of the drawer to allow room for those tip on devices to slide underneath the drawer. So I just chopped it down on the table saw and with all my pieces cut out, I started slapping drawer boxes together. For these drawer boxes, I'm constructing them out of Baltic birch plywood, which is getting harder and harder to come by. Luckily, I had some still laying around my shop. First, I screwed on the little clips that come with the drawer slides, just like the regular bloom, and then I used this little jigget jig from Rockler Woodworking to drill out the holes on the back of the drawer box that correspond to the clips on the drawer slides themselves. And then if we did everything right, we should just be able to slide the drawers into place, click, and they should do their thing. Click and open. Wow. I guess you do have to push them shut a little harder, but I think, click, they work. This video was sponsored by AG1 from Athletic Greens. AG1 is a daily supplement that's got me really excited about my own health routine. Now, I don't know about you, but when you start getting up there in age or you get really busy with work and day-to-day -day life, sometimes it's hard to include everything that you need into your diet to make sure you're getting all those good vitamins and nutrients and minerals. AG1 has 75 different ingredients including vitamins, minerals, adaptogens, probiotics, all that good stuff that's hard to get on a daily basis. And it's so incredibly easy to add into your daily routine. All you gotta do is take eight to 12 ounces of water, take a scoop of the green goodness powder, add it in there, shake and enjoy. And unlike some other daily supplements, this actually tastes good. I genuinely like the flavor. Now, if you're wondering, well, is that the only reason you take it? Because it tastes good and it's got vitamins? No, there's a bunch of other reasons that Athletic Greens is great. Let me tell you what they are. Recovery and performance. AG1 has a ton of superfoods and adaptogens like magnesium that helps with muscle recovery. Digestion. AG1 contains a bunch of naturally occurring enzymes that help bolster your digestive process, they support your metabolism, and they enhance nutrient absorption. Here's the one that I did not know. Aging. AG1 provides a bunch of antioxidants that help counteract the impact of free radicals that cause cell damage and make you age. AG1 is gluten-free, no eggs, no dairy, no added sugar, no nuts, no herbicides, no pesticides, no added colors or sweeteners. So you know you're drinking the good stuff. So if you want to try AG1, go to athleticgreens.com slash bourbon moth. And the cool thing is right now, AG1 is giving all of my followers a year supply of their immune supporting vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free travel packs with your first order. So go check it out. There's a link down there. After installing one drawer and confident in its workability, I decided to install the remainder of my drawer slides. Now I like to just clamp a square onto my cabinet carcass and then I can set the drawer slide on top and I know it's in exactly the right spot. I got the six on the outside installed and then I was getting ready to install the two in the middle but I was having trouble finding two more slides. I looked in the box, I looked in all the packaging, and that's when I realized flippity, flippin' flap, I miscounted and I only ordered six slides when I clearly needed eight. Oh jeez. So on the outside I have these cool slides that look like flippin' spaceships, and then on the inside, I'm just gonna have to use regular old slides for now until the other ones I had to order come in the mail. Gosh, so unsatisfying that you gotta actually open the drawer. Oh, what a moron. Learn to count. Anyways, after getting all my drawer slides and drawers installed, the next thing I did was just micro adjust everything to make sure that all my drawer faces were perfectly flush. They had to be absolutely dead on if all my drawer faces were going to line up and look uniformed. Then it was time to start 
sanding this stupid fluted slab. And yes, it was a total pain in the butt to hand sand each one of those individual groups. I hate myself. After doing that, I then could start cutting down this panel to wrap my vanity with. So I started by cutting a straight edge on one side. Then I measured the depth of my cabinet. Now this is going to be the only visible side of the cabinet, and I want this pattern to wrap around the front, which means I have to waterfall it, which means I have to cut both parts at a 45 so that they can line up in a perfect miter. So first I cut my side panel, kind of set it up there to make sure it fit, and then I cut the corresponding little waterfall piece. First cutting a 45 on the opposite angle as my first piece, removing this little wedge of material. Then once I had the 45 cut on that side, I could cut the piece down to be an inch and a half wide. It's just going to wrap around an inch and a half and then my drawer faces will start. It looked kind of like this and should line up to that side piece. Hey, that actually matches up quite nicely and covers up that raw plywood edge on the side. Happy with how those two pieces fit together, it was time to permanently adhere them to the side of this cabinet carcass. So I know I didn't adjust the camera very well for this part, but you get the picture. I smeared a bunch of glue on the back side, I set it up there, clamped it in place, and then I hooked it onto the carcass with some screws from the inside of the cabinet. You're not going to see these, and it'll hold that panel snug against the plywood until all that glue dries up. With my side panel in place, I then added glue to my little wraparound waterfall piece, both on the mitered edge and the back side that's going to attach to that plywood facing, and then very carefully, using just a couple clamps, I clamped it securely in place. I mean, you can never have too many clamps, right? Better safe than sorry, as I always say. I mean, that's not ridiculous at all, is it? Looks like a flipping Christmas tree. After letting that glue set up for half an hour or so, I removed all the clamps. Pretty quickly, too. I mean, there's just a couple of them. And I was ready to sand again and clean up all those little grooves and corners. Gosh, I hate sanding. Next, I measured the distance from my drawers on the right to my drawers on the left to figure out how big of a panel I needed in the middle for all my drawer faces. And I cut that panel down to size. Then I took that panel and I just held it up in place to make sure it was indeed the correct size. The thing with this whole operation is you can't screw up. You've got one shot to make every single cut. If you don't do it right, then you're done. Luckily, I did this one right, so I allowed myself a little moment of dancing. With the panel cut to the right size, I set that aside and I cut down another inch and a half strip to go on the far end of my cabinet. Now this side is gonna be butted right up against the wall, so no need to miter or waterfall this side. Just one straight piece should do the trick. So I added a little glue on the edge of the plywood and I slapped that piece in place. Just willy-nilly. I'm just kidding. Once I got it clamped securely, then I meticulously measured to make sure the distance was exactly the same from side to side on the top, bottom, and in the middle, like four places, because this has to be perfectly parallel to the other side for this whole operation to work. You also have to make sure that you're not measuring this distance exactly the same size as your panel because you have to take into account the reveals between your drawers. So you want it at least that much wider as the reveals on either side of your drawer, if that makes any sense. Anywho, with that distance set, I could start cutting down my actual panel into the individual drawer pieces. So first I cut vertically to separate my three banks of drawers and make sure they were all the correct width. Now you might be wondering, why aren't I just doing this on the table saw or cutting it some other way? I decided to cut all the drawer parts and pieces out with the track saw because this particular track saw has a thin kerf blade. 
and I'm just gonna use that as the exact spacing of the reveals between my separate drawer panels. Hopefully, if this actually works. Anyways, I just started cutting all my pieces. Once I cut them vertically, I started chopping them up horizontally, doing all of one bank first and then using those pieces to measure out for my other pieces so that all the drawers were the same width from top to bottom. And of course, they were a little different in length from side to side, depending on the size of the drawer. Now, because I only had one shot to get all these pieces lined up and everything perfect, I didn't want to just immediately screw the drawer faces to the drawer box in case I needed to micro adjust anything. So I opted for the old double sided tape trick. I got some spacer blocks to set everything exactly where I wanted, and then I just stuck those drawer faces right onto the drawer box. And believe it or not, this double-sided carpet tape is so insanely strong that it had no problem holding those solid oak drawer faces to the drawer boxes. It almost held it a little too good, because when it came time to take them off to finish everything, it was kind of a pain. But for now, for now it worked great. Looking good. Only after I was happy with the placement of the drawer face with the double-sided tape did I add screws to securely fasten it to the drawer box. The other thing that was kind of a pain is because of the fluting pattern and me shrinking down the thickness of this white oak to 3 eighths of an inch at the bottom of those cove cuts, I had to meticulously measure every single place I was going to put a fastener in to hold the drawer faces on to make sure the fastener went into the solid wood and not into the cove or else the screw would poke through the front of the cabinet. So yes, this process did take a while, but inch by inch and row by row, soon that vanity started to grow. Well, actually it stayed pretty much the same size, but I did get all the drawer faces installed. The last thing to do was to install my false drawer front where the sink is going to be in the top of the vanity. But I needed a way to attach that drawer face and bring it out to the same level as the drawer faces. So I just made that little plywood frame thingamawatsit, slid it inside the carcass, and I screwed it in place from the inside of the cabinet. Then after clamping that false face on the front, making sure it was evenly spaced right where I wanted, I sank some screws through that little plywood frame into the false face, reinserted my last drawer, and oh my goodness, all my parts and pieces are installed in place, and everything seems to work exactly as I wanted it to. Man, that never happens. Crazy. It looks pretty fresh, pretty clean, and hopefully my wife will be happy. Because I'm not building this thing again. She can just deal with it. Then just as soon as I had everything installed and perfectly placed, I took everything apart again so I could smear finish on it, making sure to meticulously label every single drawer face and corresponding drawer box. Now to finish this entire thing, my wife picked out antique bronze from Rubio Monocoat. I actually really like this color. It gives that riffs on oak an almost teak-like look and she really wanted kind of a vintage 50s vibe, so I think this accomplishes that very nicely. Once again, I was fighting those flutes, making sure to smear finish inside each and every one of those grooves. And yes, it did take a very long time. But slowly and surely, don't call me Shirley, I started working my way through every part and piece until pretty soon I had them all finished in that beautiful antique bronze color. And it was time to put the entire thing back together again. So very carefully, I relined up all of my drawer faces, screwed them in place, and before I knew it, the entire vanity was done. Click, click, boom. Now I know it might look a little plain right now, but you have to imagine it with a white marble top and a wall-mounted brass faucet. I think it's going to look pretty darn good, floating just above the floor 
in the bathroom of our new addition. Oh yeah, I also made these horseshoe drawers in the middle. Maybe I forgot to mention that, but that's to make sure they go around the plumbing. I also show that in another bathroom vanity video if you want a step-by-step -step instructional on how to make those horseshoe drawers. But for now, the vanity is done. It's just me. I still haven't switched out the drawer slides yet, but I'm going to. Man, what a bummer. That's why you should always count twice, or in my case, probably three or four times to make sure everything's the way it should be. But hey, we managed to do it. I hope you enjoyed that video. I gotta tell you, this one, man, it took a while, but we got it done. I think it looks good. It looks exactly like my wife wanted it. That's the most important thing. Make sure you check the video description. There's tons of links to products and tools that we used in the video. There's a link to our Patreon account. If you're not signed up for Patreon, you are missing out. I'm just about to head over to London, England to build with one of our patrons because they won our annual Patreon contest. So if you want me to come build with you, you gotta be signed up over on Patreon. Anyways, I'm gonna go ice my hands because they hurt from all the sanding.